time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over $30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Coca-Cola, try a game changer of your own. Taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Truck Month. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Fisher. Coach, congratulations. Uh, another great effort by your team, really from start to finish, 45-14 over Syracuse. It really was. Defense was outstanding on the day. And playing against a team that plays that fast, that pace, the formations, what they do, they did a great job of recognizing. Tremendous on third down. Created turnovers. And I thought really that when the offense, and we, or I said we had three turnovers on offense and one on uh, special teams, all but one time did they shut all those drives down right after those turnovers. A great Transitional defense and what they played, get great leverage on the ball, eight sacks on the day, good on third down, great red zone, short yard. I mean, our defense was outstanding on the day against an offense of that caliber. And then offense, we started fast, got to 14 mm -hmm. points, uh, then hit a rut there a little bit, and then but started the second half with the first three drives of scores and, and played well there. So we, we got better and still got a lot of work to do. Some of our kicking, we, we gave up some returns on the kick game, kicking the ball a little bit low, got to get more hanging. We got out of our lanes two or three times, which we shouldn't have, and uh, there's, there's still plenty to work on. Offensively, uh, or obviously it's a team game, but Dalvin Cook got a lot of headlines. The all-time leading rusher in the history of Florida State football. That's that's saying something. It is something. When you get put in the, in the in the sentence with those kind of names and tied to touchdown record, I mean, guys, it, you need to think how many guys have walked on this campus and he's done it in three years. That's yeah. the amazing thing. I mean, and uh, uh, and now also it's going to be. I think he's third or fourth in the whole conference in ACC history, mm -hmm. all time. Probably will stay there most likely. About third, but you got to remember he did that in three years with only two or three hundred yards off the record. The first guy in ACC history to ever go over four thousand in three years. So he's a very special player, and uh, we're glad we got him. That's for sure. He moves past Warwick Dunn now, number one on that all-time list. All right, we'll step aside. We'll come back and look at Dalvin Cook highlights and Florida State highlights as we get started on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, you go on the road to Syracuse, last conference game of the year. Weather was actually pretty good outside, but yeah. not a factor when you have a dome. It exactly was a dome, and it was a great, you know, great, great condition to play in, of course. And, uh, you know, outstanding right here, kicked the ball off really well, covered his first kick. Well, got him inside about the 18 yard line. Missed right here. We got pinched a little more, and Matthew overran it a hair, could have got him about the 12. But that's, you know, getting guys, and you're hitting them about the 10, 12 yard line, that's a good thing. I think gave up one first down early and got there. But guys, you know, they did a good job, Charles did, of mixing, dropping three and eight. You think, well, got to rush these guys. Well, sometimes when you drop eight guys, and I know as a quarterback guy, that stuff drives you crazy sometimes when you're not expecting it. And just keeping a good mix right there. Now, that's, God dang, the big guy got played over the top right there and got the first uh, first down of the game on third and long there. But other than that, we got pretty good. And here, the great job on the jailbreak screen. Guys seen it coming up, Brian Burns. And that guy right there, whether he's dropping, whether he's rushing now, he is, he is pretty daggone good. And look here. Goes and gets a blocked punt. Just rushing normally. Those long arms. Now, this is a bad mistake right here by Naquan. When that ball got touched, he did not need to run up and grab it like that. He needed to get away from it. That was a critical mistake right there. We'll coach him up on that. DeAndre started hot, boy. Come back, man. Nice read. Come all the way backside to a fourth read guy on the backside of the play and uh, really made a nice uh, nice call right there. Now we hit the reverse coming out and Kermit. Nice block. DeAndre getting out front and Kermit, again, using those legs and that speed and getting, getting us some nice yardage and getting a good tempo of the game set down right here. Just, again, Another big first drive, third down, touchdown throw. I mean, that's three. That's two weeks in a row now that the first touchdowns and the first two touchdowns last week and this one here are all third down conversions and not having to kick field goal. That's a big deal. Again, the defense guy was Nooney on a great catch, good route. Here they go, come back inside, throwing. Uh, got a hole shot. We got to get off the hash a little bit better right there. We were playing, mixing the coverages and our safeties, you know, mixing them in too deep and they got to get off that hash. Good job of Naughty and I think give up about 37 yards rushing in the game. Guys inside Naughty, Christmas, uh, Fred and all those guys. Uh, tell you what, Matthew Thomas out on the edge. He and Burns, we had those two in, in uh, outside, like outside linebackers. Boy, they were really good in leverage and coverage. Right there, nice job, A.J. Westbrook. They had the trick play, the double pass or flea flick or whatever it was right there. And there's Brian Burns for now. I think he had two and a half sacks and two and a half tackles for loss. He's a true freshman. This gets better and better. We come back, get hot right here. 
a nice little play action. Gandhi made really good decisions. Nice job of Odd Tate. And I, I was Odd and those guys were doing better, catching that ball, getting north south, and using their hands. Their routes are getting more disciplined. Now, here we go. Here's the record breaking run. And it was a check off. Uh, 12 guys in the right play. And I mean, just inches from going out the gate. And they got to push in the back. And it's the all time leading rusher in Florida State history. He was just getting warmed up at this point. Yeah, he was. He really was. He really was. A nice play action here. Got a little double move inside, reading the tight end, and then come back to the flank. That's a second read on the play, and really made a nice throw. Great route right there by Travis Rudolph. And again, getting up 14 points right off the bat was huge. And uh, really two really well executed drives, the first two drives of the game. Again, the defense coming back. They get a little jailbreak screen. Oh, right there. There's Demarcus Walker. Catching the jailbreak screen up underneath. And uh, those linemen, they can read that. People say, they read those linemen. They feel they're not blocked and things are too easy. You start thinking screen, and they're doing a good job of recognizing those things. Brad and Odell do a good job of those guys up front seeing that. Oh, here we got – Trey got a little greedy here now. He let that guy get behind him. That was, that was a mistake there by Trey. They missed – they had a couple deep balls that they had chances on it. They just missed on it. We were lucky. By Matthew Thomas, again, that speed and agility. He and Burns and those guys playing in space. And Josh Sweat played an outstanding game. Had led us in tackles. Had a sack and a half to tackles for loss. And, now, nice job right here, uh, DeAndre getting us moving the ball. And then what we did, we lost field position. But we gave up the punt returns, and then they were punting us back. And then we started moving the ball, but we weren't scoring. Right here, we got we, we to come off on that twist. We got to get the center pop back right there, him in the garden, and get that twist picked up. But uh, good job by DeAndre. Now, this right here is a late hit. I thought it was a late hit on the quarterback. He had two full steps, and, but he needs to make that throw. He had plenty of time. He just threw it high. He just threw that ball high right there. Should have had the uh, pylon throw. Again, right here, we got guys out of our lane. We had a guy, a guard right there, 18, Roderick and those guys coming down. And right here is where Trey got hurt. Right there is where he, he banged his hip right there because uh, 87 dive and put his helmet right on his hip on that play. If we get the punt, punt uh, return guy down back there, we don't have that problem. Guys getting out of lane, being undisciplined. Again, right there, again, Demarcus Walker, two more sacks. Great job. Really doing a good job. DeAndre coming off the goal line now. We run a little boot. Good job. Cole Minshew getting his first start of the day. Great, I mean, uh, of the year in his career. Great job by him, and, uh, you know, great to see Cole in the game, and he played very well with him in the game. Dalvin right here got tripped by a leg right there. That one there may have went to the house. He's in, but he's got to press the front side of the hole. He cut it back too quick. And right here, they ran a, a dropped a defensive end out, and Izzo did not see him underneath, and he's got to feel that and set back inside, but that's very hard to do. And uh, DeAndre saw it, but he couldn't see it. Now, here's another one. I thought we had a hold down there on 87. I thought they grabbed him in the back, but... Uh, got to push in the back, but they got a good punt. Their punt return, I said going in, their return guys are good, and they take chances. Nice job here, McFadden, and the pressure guys is making those guys just stay alive, and it's hard when you don't get, you get, most guys are scrambling to stay locked up that long. There's Brian Burns again. Boy, he's got a chance to be a really, really good player. Just keep developing. Just keep developing. Here we get a nice play action. Find the tight end right down the middle. Our tight ends made some nice vertical catches on the day. We were running in two tights, and Maven took a shot right there. Got to get up. Got to get up. Got to get up and go. He got banged up. Hit a little out route right here. And uh, nice job by uh, Auden, uh, that big body, those big, those big catches. And right here, DeAndre makes a mistake. What happened? Dalvin got tied up. He's trying to throw this ball away and didn't get enough on it. He didn't see the guy there and thought he was throwing it away and didn't put enough on it. And Dalvin's got to clean that out for the tight end coming under. And uh, unfortunately, he got held up by the lineman. He got on the fake and uh, he got tied up. DeAndre's got to throw it away better. Made the right decision, just a poor throw. And here they get, now, what, that, what does turnovers do? Create momentum. And that was great for our defense. They were giving up some yards right here. And we got to get down and we made the tackle right there. There's A.J. Westbrook and Erman Lane. Erman Lane also got his first intercept, but watch right here. There you go. McFadden, that big body. He now he used his technique, got his hip on, squeezed the guy to the sideline, and that's a big interception in the red zone right there. That had been 14-7. And on the road, you don't want those things happening. Now we get a little counter coming right back out here. Dalvin, that turf was soft. We fell three or four times on it. It's really good turf, but it was a little softer than normal. Our guys were sticking their foot and slipping. Nice, uh, nice throw by DeAndre right here. Nice corner route by Nooney. Uh, again. Good throw and catch. Right here. Now finds a crossing route, checks it down underneath the 15. Now 15, I like to see him get north-south right there. Don't get going sideways too much. A nice catch. Travis played another great game. We pop our inside run right here, get a real block play. The linebacker got tied up to the center, and the rest of them got a hat on a hat, and Dalvin found a seam, and we get up three scores. And it's always important to stay up three scores and uh, what we're doing. We should have scored two minutes before the half, too, Dagnon. That was what was tough one. All right, right here, there's Josh Sweat. Again, Ehrman getting in. This is the one because we fumble off this one. Uh, Ehrman gets his first pick. Great job here getting back north south. Great to see him get a pick right there with the pressure from the guy's backside. And what happened was the next play when DeAndre ran and we missed the block with a score. Now Dalvin's running right here. And he just guy got the guy's handling the ball. Yeah, got to keep that tip up high and tight and got a little bit flat. 
And uh, that's the only thing on the day. John, I mean, uh, Dalvin had two fumbles on the day, which are very uncharacteristic of him, and uh, we've got to make sure we get that correct. 91, Derek Naughty inside our run defense is outstanding on the day. Sweating those guys. Good job right there. Naughty getting pressure, forcing them out. And there, I can't see who is that. That's, uh, is that Roderick? Roderick came in there and got him a sack right there. Dove out, did a good job. And right here, got a run. He lects to, I mean, got a pass. He lects to hit that edge. Right here, if we get the block up top again, another 10, 12 yard gain. Nice job by DeAndre. Nice two minute drive right here. Boom, found the corner route, back shoulder. Got to lay it out just a little more, but that's a really good catch right there by eight on the corner route. And we uh, end up missing the field goal right here. We had a 54 yarder. He had to, he had the leg, just pulled it to the right a little bit and uh, didn't hit it. Boom, back inside on the screen. Good job, third and really long right here and uh, got him down on the ground. Down here, they scramble right here. We're back here to make the play. What we got to do is box them out. We got to box out. We went and played the ball. Let the guy get inside, didn't box him out, and they get a touchdown before the half, which is critical. Now, crazy that sounds, as dominant as we've been, could have scored two more touchdowns, but we only scored uh, 21 points. They go 21-7. You're only two plays. Wait, we go back there and well, one, you make a turnover and they get a score. All of a sudden, it's a one play game, changes the whole game. That was a critical, that was the only big mistake the defense made, and the offense should have scored on a two minute drive going down in there. We missed a read underneath and uh, uh, then got some pressure on another throw and, did, and missed that field goal, but we can't give that up on defense. That's the only thing they did wrong that, about the whole day. So it's 21 uh, 7 at intermission. The big play of that first half, we saw it in the red zone. Uh, the uh, eighth interception of the season yes. for Tavares McFadden, which paces the country. Exactly right, leading the country. If they make that play, it's 21-14. I mean, they only had two drives in the game, but that's why on offense you got to finish drives. We, we left points on the board, I mean, on the field out there, and we don't need to do that, but great job by Tavares in that big interception in the end zone. Great, great technique. Everybody talks about the play, but what he did, he got his – butt to the guy, squeeze the guy to the sideline, play with good, and he became the receiver on the play and did a great job. So Florida State with the lead at intermission. We'll step aside, come back, and look at the second half highlights when we continue right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. And their play action fake sold by Sean McGuire. Dropping McGuire throws a deep ball downfield toward Travis Rudolph. It is a caught ball at the 30. Breaks a tackle to the 20. He's to the 15 yard line. Rudolph to the 10 with a guy to beat. Shoves a guy out of his way. Dives to the goal line. Touchdown up there, too. That's Travis Rudolph. What a play by Rudolph. He made the catch. Two defenders on him. Then he knocked guys out of the way. Get out of my face, he says. And number 15 took it to the house. 75 yards. Touchdown up there, too. Second down, four toss pits to the near side, running with the football. Jack West, Patrick Daylight to the 45. Drags tacklers to the 50. Lou knocks the helmet off, but he's brought down to the 45. The Knowles move right, first down from the 45. Dropping to throw, McGuire steps up, looks downfield, throws a pass, down toward the end zone. Rudolph will make the catch. Touchdown FSU. Travis Rudolph has two today. Knowles are just one of four on third down. Good snap, empty backfield. Sean McGuire dodges a would-be sacker. Drops, looks downfield, throws it downfield. Got a receiver open. Caught ball at the 25-yard line. And guess who? Travis Rudolph. Patrick, here's the snap. Toss pitch right side. Got a blocker in front. High cuts it back to the 10, to the 5, to the 2-yard line. Jacquez Patrick. Boy, he's a big lumbering running back, isn't he? Knowles with an extra H back in the DeMarcus Walker. Hand off to Patrick, running left. He's close. He has a Florida State touchdown. Refused to go down. Jacquez Patrick, a first career touchdown run. Heading toward the north end zone. Shotgun. Here's the snap. McGuire looking. Swing pass to the left side. Caught in the flat by Patrick. He's to the 50. Patrick to the 45, to the 40. Outside the numbers. And he's out of bounds. The line of scrimmage to the 26. The snap. McGuire. A shot. Caught at the 15. To the near side. I Bobo Wilson out of bounds at the 6-yard line. 15 seconds remain. Awaits the snap. Hands the ball off. And Patrick goes over the top. Touchdown FSU. He found that eight gap and wrapped it into the goal line. And the Seminoles lead 27 to 14. How about that? Backfield. Dungey will call his number again. He's going to run to the left. Tackle. Short of the first down. Oh, bubble football. Picked up by the Seminoles. Josh Swift's got it. And the Seminoles have the first takeaway of the game. 
Gun side car left the snap. McGuire looking to his right. Fires it to his right toward the end zone. It is a caught ball. Touchdown FSU. Touchdown Travis Rudolph. Fingertip grab of the corner of the end zone. My goodness, did he make a great snag. FSU leads by three scores now, 34-14. Dungy takes the snap. He looks upfield. He's going to be hit by Noddy, hit by Walker, and he's dropped in his tracks for a quarterback sack. Noddy gets the sack, and Demarcus Walker finished him off. Down in 10 from the 28. Again, it's Patrick up the middle. He goes to the right side. Made a guy miss. He's on his feet to the 10. 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Jacquez Patrick. Made two guys miss, and he scoots for 28 yards. Touchdown, FSU. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, you needed your team to, to respond after the momentum sort of yes. shifted right before halftime. And, and the good news is your team did exactly what they you did. needed. They did. We come out, boy, and we're hot on offense. Got, the first sack, he should have thrown the corner route and took a sack. Didn't need to do that. But then we got the run. He picked up the big third down, and we got hot right here. And uh, this is the one right here. So he should have let the corner route go right there. He got, that, he got to let it go. It was there for about a 20-yard gain. That was a mistake by DeAndre right there. We come back, get the little kick out play right here. Good run by Dalvin. He, it, it ends up being about a 10-yard run. It should have been about a six yard. He made a great run right there. And then we were able to pick up this big third down. I don't know if they show it right here. Yes, nice job. This is actually a, a read route inside by eight. He sets it in the hole perfectly. We read it, get the first down, and get the momentum going. Come back, get a nice play action. Anytime you fake it to four, it's good. And he finds, now he finds that tight end. Our tight ends are doing a great job of getting vertical. And then great run by Ryan Izzo right there. You see the big size and athleticism. Those guys just get better and better and better. Good thing they're just young sophomores. Then we run the counter play, get it outside. Dalvin, just this one guy, uh, almost got the cut back and got in there. But uh, the guys get in there. We pop his zone. They, they blitz up inside, hit a twist. He bounces it and one-on-one -on -one with the safety makes him miss, and we're able to get in the end zone. And uh, great run by him. That gets us back up three scores, which is critical. But more important, got the momentum of the football game. You know, they come out right here on the quick game. Again, just four and five-yard routes because our rush is getting there. So uh, it's helping us. There's DeMarcus getting, making the guy move off the spot. I don't care, man. They had now right there. Tavares got a little bit beat right there now, but the pressure helped that one out. You know, you play man, you guys are gonna get on top of every so often. And again, they hit two punts now. I don't know what they got in that ball, but it was deadening right on that tag <laughs> on five yard line. It was hitting right there and go. We pop a run out here. Nice drive by Dalvin. Get a nice eight ten yard run right here out of the, out of the goal line, which is critical. You get a little sweet. This is watch. Maven's gonna make that block because Dalvin thought that play's gonna go for about ten or fifteen, but uh, we just missed it. But uh, now we get nice play action. He works, throws the bubble out here. It's a read for him. And we, now we're making them play sideline to sideline. Got the run. We got the hard. Now Now we come back, get a hard play action, go right down the middle of the field. So we're getting vertical routes. We're getting the ball side to side. We're running the ball inside, outside, making them defend all the grass. Now we pop a, an inside run here, and he, Dalvin on his own play, winds it back. Of course, Dalvin being Dalvin makes a great run. There's that foot slip just a little bit right there. It's really good turf, just a hair soft. Now we pop a stretch. Great block right there by Freddie Stevens. Another unsung here when Dalvin bounces a stretch play. Great blocking all the way across the board. Hat, hats on hats, and we get outside, and uh, Dalvin gets another touchdown. Now we get up four scores, which is, again, critical. And what I want to do is establish a momentum here, establish a rhythm, and understand how to keep playing. And that's what we got to keep doing as a team. And there they start to bring it out. Another great coverage right there. They pop one out here later, but nice job, A.J. Westbrook. Getting back down there. Good play action. They get a little boot naked, get outside. Good job, Josh Sweat. Guys keeping contained, playing the receivers. Has to throw it away. Nowhere to go with it. That's, that's just great football right there. And they get play action again. Try to go. Got a guy in his face. That's why the ball's high. And they got a guy open. We get rushed, get hands in the face. Guy has to throw over top. And this is one mistake. Number one job as a punt returner, catch the football. He's wanting to make a move right there on the guy. Took his eyes off, let the ball go through, and listen, Nooney's going to be a super player, but he's got to learn the number one objective as a punt returner is catch the football first. Even if you fair catch it, I don't care. We get the ball back. The only way they can score is they got the ball. So we do something dumb a lot. Now, and that's the one time in transition, they had a little uh, double move. Now, great play right here by Carl. Trying to change momentum again. There is a, a true freshman recovering an onside kick, and I know a, a surprise onside. That's great awareness right there. Great play by Carlos Becker. Again, yeah, nice, well, what a throw right here and catch by 18 and 12. Uh, Tate and DeAndre made real nice uh, 
throw and catch right there. Now we go back to the other side, finds Kermit. We had a penalty, which got us back there. They called a block in the back or holding, I can't remember. And we pop it right here. Dalvin makes almost a great run right here by himself. And we get down there, second goal, and uh, got some things going on. He pops the counter play on the backside. Great drop by Ryan Izzo right there. Gets the corners blocked, makes a safety miss as he comes down, and we're in the end zone again. That's three straight times the offense touched the ball and scored. And, you know, the first three of the second half, first two of the first half, one other. And uh, now we're starting to get the game in control. But still, again, I got it momentum. I want to give Dalvin just a couple more plays, and we're going to run Jock West. Now, this is one. We got Alvar Lanes. We, we got two guys coming down Alvar Lanes. The backside guy doesn't squeeze, and we give up a hole. Again, that's the focus issue. You've got to focus every play. Never let a team think they have hope. That's what this young, and unfortunately right there, we got a couple guys right there. Calvin had some concussion symptoms, and I think 19. 19 wasn't quite as bad as Calvin. Calvin had a good hit right there, and they picked up a big third down. Had to come down a little quicker, could have got it broken up. 91, nice job by Naughty inside, being physical. That's a good thing here. You ain't got time to celebrate no tackle here. You better turn around and get lined up. They're going to be snapping the ball again here in a minute. Great job right there is uh, Carlos Becker almost, him and helping uh, McFadden over the top. Great young, again, guys, a chance to be a really, really good player. Great job in the rush. There's Sweat on who else? Naughty. Uh, Matthew Thomas, everybody's in on that one. And we pop a little counter run right here, and this one's inches from coming. He slips right here, watch. See his foot's give way? That one right there may have been about an 80-yarder. That would have been interesting. And we pop his own play right here. Again, he's hitting it going north-south in his quickness. Does a great job of loudly sticking that foot in the ground. And then we run a quick play, a quick toss right here. This is going to be his last play. And what happens, he thinks Freddie blocks this guy outside, watch. Freddie misses him, and he's got his eyes inside, but you cannot. Had to tip down, did not have it up, and they stripped it. And uh, had a nice game, but... Uncharacteristic Dalvin again. We just keep giving them hope. Nice hit right here by Marcus on the backside. We get an interference. That gummit, he did grab him. He held him up. It was an underthrow. It was because of the sack and the hit. A great job right there. Josh Sweat, again, getting the pass. He plays the run incredible. Everybody thinks how, he is strong, guys. I've been talking about really strong. And then yeah, now that pass rush is coming. He's getting healthy. He's playing better and better. They called one on Becker up the line of scrimmage. I couldn't see that one uh, on the thing, but then obviously he did it. They wouldn't have called it. Uh, nice job here on the screen inside, but what it was, they had linemen downfield and receivers down. They were way down the field and threw the ball across the line of scrimmage because we actually played the screen, and when you bounce it like that, it can break like that, but it's illegal. Good job right there, Demarcus Walker. Getting back. DeAndre on a nice little run it route outside of 15. Just keep moving the ball. We're trying to keep our defense off the field, run the football. Jacquez came in, and I thought ran really. His pad level is doing so much better. Stay with Freddie, though. Stay with your wingman. That's what Tom Cruise said in uh, Top Gun. Stay with your wingman. I ain't going to leave my wingman. If he stayed with him, might have had a better run. Nice catch by Kermit right here. Good job. Good run. Good physical run. Throwing the bubbles, making him defend the grass. Jacquez here. Nice read. Look at the, at the shifty. Now drop that pad level. Now give me five more yards. Great job. Just gets better and better. He keeps getting better and better. Nice little play action here. Right here, he got Sean just a hair quicker, and Enzo's got it. Just hang on to it. Uh, he had a big catch. That had been a nice touchdown catch. But then Ricky comes in and hits a nice field. It's great to see Ricky because he hadn't had a chance to kick a field goal the last couple games. First one in the last two games, and uh, the man drills it right down the middle. That was a great job. And they go back on top right here. Great job, guys. Levante Taylor out there playing corner. Ehrman getting over the top. You know, they're pumping it. Now they have to check it down. We're playing the check down, too. Our guys just great with their eyes. Now, unfortunately, we need to check this play right here. We just need to be a check the other way. They had a bad look, and uh, we need to get out of that. And they got a nickel, uh, the corner right here. We got to block out with the tight end. We got to get that edge right there and uh, see that corner coming in. Our young guys in the game, first time they've been in there, and it was part of growing up. That's got to do. Trying to get the ball off the goal line, just get enough to punt it, get it out of there. And you see, Big, Big Jack comes in and gets him a punt. That's his first one of the year. He's been a super job. He transferred to us from Oklahoma. Jack did a nice job kicking the ball right there, and uh, it, it does a really nice job punting and does a great job holding. We lost the edge right there, but Knight Garrett's Carlos Becker. You see what I'm talking about with this guy. Now, this is a long, lanky, physical DB now that can play corner and safety and likes to play now. He can play. And they got a quarterback run, trying to run it up inside. Good job, Nick Patty. Nice job, uh, D Jack in the game, playing really well. Now, Ryan Green. Boy, he, he's inches right here. If we get this block back or cut off, that, I'm sure that one wouldn't win because Ryan is explosive. He gets two nice runs, and again, Ryan's going to be a really good player for us. He is a good player for us, and uh, did a nice job coming in, running the ball, picking up about. 12, 14 yards on two carries. And we end the game and we're able to get it out. And Dalvin, there's your all-time leading rusher and tied for touchdowns. And just look at how he's happy for his teammates. Yeah. That's, that's Dalvin. That, that's the thing about Dalvin that jumps out at you. There's no entitlement. There's no, I'm better than everybody. I'm, I'm one of you guys. I'm a great teammate. I love, I love our team. And he's happy for all the guys. 225 yards rushing, 
basically in three quarters, four yeah. touchdowns, gets the all-time mark. But your offense overall had 650 before you shut it down, and, and you limited Syracuse to just 233 yards, eight sacks. for your That's exactly team. right. The sacks, the third down conversions, the, the, off the transition, off the turnovers, defense was outstanding. They've been putting up some numbers. They were averaging 440, 450 yards a game and uh, did a good job offensively. Again, moved the football very well, got to finish some drives, but just getting better in the run game, great balance. I think we, one was – it was like 320 passing to 330 some rushing and you know good balance in that regard. Big play of the second half, really a big drive of the second half. And that was the first one when you it really went was. down. You can pick a play in there, but it was important to score that drive. Changing momentum because we'd given up no man with the touchdown before the half. No, we didn't score on two minutes. They gave up the, the Hail Mary, and they hit it. And they're two plays away from being in the game. You go turn it over, do something crazy. But we go back and get that three-score lead, then the four-score. But that first drive, reestablishing the momentum, setting the tempo of the game. And very proud of our guys. It's part of growing up. Very happy for them. 45-14, the final score. Florida State gets the win. Coach, I think you know who's next on the schedule. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about that matchup when we come back right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Today's final stats are presented by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Inside the Helmet is presented by Hyundai. Hello, I'm Ermin Lane, a junior here at Florida State University. I play free safety and I'm from Miami, Florida. Oh man, in high school I was a big UM, UM fan. Growing up, one from everybody was a UM fan. Like my last year in high school, me and Dalvin, we had went to the All-American game and he was like, he coming to Florida State and we always wanted to play, play with each other. So I had made up my mind that I was gonna come to Florida State. When I was growing up, I always wanted to play football because like my brother had a chance to play football and he, it didn't work out, so I always wanted to be the one to play. Me and my brother always competed, but he always wanted me to get better because he was older than me. He always wanted me to be better than him. He calls me every day. He asks me like how I did in practice. He's always watching the games. He always called me after the game to tell me what I did wrong. Oh man, my heroes. It was this one. There's one player, he plays for Arizona Cardinals, John Brown. Like, he from my same neighborhood. Like, he went through a lot. Like, his brother had died, and he was playing for his brother, and he made it to the NFL. Like, he was, I used to always look up to him. The transition was hard. It was like, here at my freshman year, we had the uh, 6 o'clock workouts. So I had to adapt to that. In high school, it was just like, we go to class, we get out, and we have practice in the afternoon and stuff. Me and the teammates, we have online, like for Xbox One, and we like play against each other, like in basketball, like 2K or in Madden. Best player I played against in Madden has to be Duran James and in 2K. Yeah, Duran James, he's a game freak. Yeah, it's real competitive. We always like going back and forth with each other, but he always found a way to win. Oh man, it was a dream come true. Like my senior year, I always watched videos of the 2013 team. And then when I joined the team, like my first time running out, seeing all them fans, it was unbelievable. Oh, switching over to the defensive side has been great. I'm still learning the position on the college level because I played it in high school, but I think the transition was great overall. something about the nostalgia of doing something for the first time in over three decades in your football stadium. Are you guys ready for some country music? 
It's a November Saturday night in Tallahassee, and Dope Campbell Stadium is ready to rock. Hey girl, what's up? I know it's late, but I knew you'd pick it up. Nah. Tyler Farr. I want to see Bobby Bones. <laughs> I get to meet you all today, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, being, it's great weather, great night, being outside, listening to music in the fall weather. Typically on this day, rowdy Seminole fans decked out in garnet and gold can be found tailgating around the city, preparing to cheer the FSU football team onto a victory. Tonight, tailgaters still surround Dote Campbell, yet this Saturday night, they're gathering for a different event. What's up, Florida Stop? Doke After Dark is kind of something that we've been working on for a while. We've wanted to do this. It's been about three decades since there's been a concert of a ticketed fashion in Doak. When the ACC came out with the schedule and we had a uh, Friday night kickoff, and so we thought, well, this gives us the opportunity to do something really cool. Some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry have taken the stage at Doak Campbell, the most recent of which was powwow headlanger Jay Leno in 1989. Now, 27 years later, fans are eager to experience a recently renovated Doak in a new light. Growing up in Tallahassee, there were a lot of concerts at Doak. In fact, the first concert I ever went to was in 1976 when uh, ZZ Top played on their Worldwide Texas Tour here at Doak Campbell Stadium. So that was my first concert. The holiday weekend and atypical Friday night kickoff against Boston College provided the perfect opportunity to finally bring a concert back to Dope Campbell Stadium. The biggest obstacle is being able to flip the stadium from a football game on a Friday night at midnight to a concert venue less than 24 hours later. So getting a big 40 by 40 foot stage in there with a light rig and a roof is, is a challenge. Um, cleaning the stadium from the night before and then having three artists come in that you have to entertain and get them ready for their show and have them sound check. To make the night as enjoyable as possible, FSU offered free parking and low ticket prices. One of the best benefits, a unique opportunity to experience the Champions Club. This is a good opportunity for anyone that has wanted to come and see what it's like to live the Champions Club lifestyle for only $40. I mean, where can you go and get a club seat for $40? So for four hours, country favorites Bobby Bones, Old Dominion, and Tyler Farr transformed a football haven into a music hall. And there's no doubt that it was a night to remember. You've got this great coliseum, so to speak, this beautiful stadium that gets used seven times a year. And, you know, to be competitive in this day and age, we've got to find ways to use this building more often. Beer on a breath in a parking lot, kill the headlights so we wouldn't get caught. Here and gone. For now, Dope Campbell will return to its football roots, but it appears the concerts are here to stay. Knoll fans can break out their boots once again on April 29th. Are you ready for Blake Shelton and Chick Owen? I'm, I'm a big Blake fan. Fan, so I, I'm going to have to come to that. Especially, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun in the stadium. I think that adds a lot to a concert. I did oh, see it. Oh, we're going. very excited we're, about it. As soon as those tickets drop, we're going to be the yes. first two to buy them. When they announced that, I turned around to my son and I said, uh, we got to come to that. He said, oh, definitely. I'm Catherine Phillips for the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Be sure to tune in next week when we cover the Florida State vs. Florida Sunshine Showdown, presented by Fresh from Florida. Visit sunshineshowdown.com for a chance to win a trip to the Seminole Bowl game and a 2017 Florida State football package. Shop local, buy local. And remember, delicious is always served fresh from Florida. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show, Coach. Time to talk about the Sunshine Showdown, which is Florida, Florida State. And I know, first of all, uh, you're happy that it's here in Tallahassee at Doe Campbell State. No doubt about that. I mean, like I say, going down the swamp is a very tough place to play, and they got a great team. And they, they're, they're going to be coming in there confident. They come off a huge win down in uh, Baton Rouge and beat a very good LSU team, 16-10, on a goal line stand. 
And so they're going to be coming here ready to play. They're playing great defense. Offensively, they're running the football. Had a 100-yard rusher, get big plays to a 98-yard touchdown. Great on special teams. Jim's doing a great job with those guys. And they just won the SEC East. So this is a very good football team. They're going to be playing very well. And we're going to have to really play our best game of the year. And it's going to be a big challenge uh, offensively well, across the board. But, I mean, their defense has been where they've hung their hat the last couple of years. Oh, no doubt. I mean, they're, they're, they're great on defense. They're backers, size up front. A lot of guys we know try to recruit secondary guys, play a lot of man, can cover the heck out of you. I mean, it's an excellent football team. A lot of history in this rivalry, too. Yeah. I mean, there's been some pretty big Florida State-Florida games over the years. There really has. And that's, that's one of the reasons you come to Florida, to be able to play in one of these great rivalries. I mean, yeah. Miami's a great rival, but Florida, I mean, is, it, is one of the great – Florida, Florida State's one of the great rivals. And you, get, you go back and look at the history of what this game has meant to national championships and – and everything that goes on, it, it's, it's one of the best out there. Eight o'clock kick, oh, by the way, for this Sunshine Showdown <laughs> on Saturday night. So it'll be electric at Doe Campbell Stadium as Florida comes to town to take on Florida State. All right, we'll come back with some final thoughts right after this here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coming to you from the Sports Nutrition Center at Florida State, we have Chris Burkett, one of the registered dietitians here, to talk about a very important issue, an issue that's going to touch a lot of people that are watching, alcohol. Right. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people probably don't want to know the effects of alcohol, but uh, beyond what it does, uh, just as far as dieting, it really hurts you trying to lose weight. Yeah, so alcohol is a big issue, like you said. Uh, one of the big things with alcohol is that the recommendation is, you know, one drink a night is okay. But the real issue is, is that alcohol negatively affects you more than what the positives might be. So it's really better not to have any alcohol at all, which is not necessarily something that people want to hear, but that is the best recommendation. Before we dive even more into it, uh, you said about one drink a night. Right. So let's just say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you don't drink. Does that now equate to five on Friday that you can have? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> that is generally what we refer to as binge drinking. Right. Um, over two drinks a night is what's considered binge drinking. Um, and that actually has a lot of issues with that. For example, sleep, and for, especially for our athletes and even those people at home, sleep is a huge thing for recovery. And basically what alcohol does is it interrupts your sleep patterns and you don't feel as well rested the next morning. Because I know a lot of people wake up the next morning after drinking and they feel more tired than they did when, when they went to bed. So is there a better drink to go to? Is wine better than beer? Or what, what do you focus on on drinking if you're gonna have that drink? Right, so with drinking, again, I would focus more on the recommendations that the FDA puts out with that one drink a night, one to two drinks a night, one for women generally and two for men. Um, and then you need to focus on portion size. So, for example, the graphic behind us, uh, one beer is about 12 ounces, a glass of wine is about five ounces, uh, hard liquor is about an ounce, and then malt liquor, so things like Smirnoff Ice, about eight to nine ounces. So there's not necessarily a better one. The thought is that red wine might be, potentially be better, um, but again, the negatives do far outweigh the benefits of any kind of alcohol. How have you seen it affecting people that are trying to lose weight? I mean, they could still go to the gym five times a week, but they're not seeing any loss because of alcohol. How does it affect? Right. So again, if you're drinking one to two extra or one to two drinks a night, you're drinking about three to four hundred calories extra. And then when you go out on the weekends and you have five or six drinks, I know, like I know some people do, you know, that's a thousand extra calories. Alcohol also stimulates appetite, your appetite. So you're more likely to eat, you know, have those, that fourth meal, you know, uh, okay. and go to Whataburger after you go to the bar. And so that's even more calories on top of the alcohol. You're going to be the most unpopular guy at tailgates. Definitely. So <laughs> what is, what's your suggestion for people at tailgates that, you know, like you said, binge drinking is more than just two beers. So what are maybe your suggestions for people at, at a tailgate, at a watch party, whatever they may be doing? I mean, you can definitely enjoy yourself at the watch party tailgate wherever you're at. I would, I would still recommend sticking to that one or two beer uh, limit. Um, try to drink water, you can drink soda uh, and things like that. But again, alcohol definitely has negative effects and I can't recommend drinking more than one to two. <laughs> All right, well there it is. One to two drinks a night 
That's Chris Burkett. Got plenty more information for you at FSU Fuel on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next time. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, I, I want your comments. Uh, you know, a, a sad turn of events here. Florida State lost a dear member of the family and Associate Athletics Director Monk Bonasort. You know, I don't know if anyone, I'm sure people do, but no one loved Florida State any more than Monk did. His whole life was dedicated to Florida State and the student athletes of this university. I mean, he truly cared for them. He tried to do what was right for them every time. He was a guy you could trust, a guy you could count on. Uh, I mean, Florida State lost a huge member of his family, and I lost a great friend. I mean, he was more than that. I mean, we became very close, and and just the trust I had with him and, and how he cared, and, you know, he thinks about the players in, in a way that I feel like I do too, and that he's just a special person in Beverly and TJ and Rocky, and our deepest condolences go out, but, you know, Monk's in a better place. There's no doubt he's in heaven, and uh, one of the truly great Seminoles and one of the great players, an All-American here, second all-time in interceptions. People forget sometimes how great a player he was and the teams he had in 78, the undefeated teams, the Orange Bowl teams. But, you know, I'm, I'm just going to miss him. One of these kids are going to miss him. They have no idea how they're going to miss him. But I'm truly going to miss him as a friend. And he was, he was a great friend to me and uh, uh, you know, very saddened, but also happy that he's in a great place. But uh, Florida State lost a heck of a guy today or yesterday. Yeah. They certainly did prayers and thoughts to the entire uh, Bonasort uh, family. That'll do it for this week. 8 o'clock kick for the Sunshine Showdown, Florida and Florida State. And we'll have a look back next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over $30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Coca-Cola, try a game-changer of your own. Taste the feeling. SunTrust the official bank of Florida State Athletics. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. <laughs>